proposed resolution under Article 75 of the Basic Law to amend the rules of procedure. Others' motions. Proposed resolution under Article 75 of the Basic Law to amend the rules of procedure. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon the Honorable Pauzet to move and speak on the motion. President, I, as uh, Chairman of uh, the um, Rules of Procedure Committee, move uh, the motion as printed on agenda be passed to uh, amend some provisions of uh, the Rules of Procedure in the alleged code of the Uncle SAL. The House Committee passed uh, the second batch of amendments. There are four groups on the 25th of June. The first is um, committee membership and election of the chairman and deputy chairman of a committee, uh, setting a cap on the membership size of a panel and a bills committee at 20 and 15, respectively. Second, to put in place a new mechanism to allocate committee seats. Each member can serve on a maximum of six panels at the same time. Three, amending the procedure for election of the chairman and deputy chairman of a committee. The second batch are deals with procedures for dealing with quorum, course, and points of order. Uh, we propose to introduce three new procedures. First, uh, to impose financial penalties on members absent without valid reason when a council meeting is adjourned due to a lack of quorum. And the uh, financial penalty is an across the board penalty which is equivalent to one day's remuneration of a member not serving on the EXCO. The uh, provision may be added to the ROP at the later stage after the relevant amending legislation is passed uh, by the Council. Uh, three, a member shall not interrupt another member except by raising uh, to a point of order and of court by the President Council or the Chairman and the Committee of the whole Council to speak. And the member interpreting, interrupting may be directed to discontinue speaking of the Council. Uh, president or chairman in uh, uh, Council of Whole Committee is of the opinion that the interruption is an absence of procedure, and the ROP will be amended to the fact that the president in council, the chairman in uh, COWC, or the chairman of any committee may decide when and how he would deal with a point of order if it's not his of the opinion that the raising of a point of order is an abuse of procedure. The member presiding in council and in COWC may exercise the proposed discretion, whereas any member presiding in any other committee shall not. The third proposal, attire for members attending council meetings and a council of home meeting. An requirement does not apply to meetings and other committees. Four, display of objects by members at council meetings. Members may display an object while she is speaking. However, the object must conform to ROP 41 and also uh, 19B. Now, uh, subject to the passage of the resolution, it will be published on the Government Gazette, whereupon the amendments to uh, ROP and House Rules set forth therein, except those relating to membership and election of Chairman of Committees, which will take effect in the seventh term of the Council, will come into operation. Very quickly, Madam um, uh, Deputy, uh, there's another round of substantive and uh, Considerable amendments to the rules of procedure. Now, um, after the uh, chaos, uh, we are now uh, resolved to normal. This morning, I uh, saw that many uh, secretaries um, were able to move new uh, bills. I think uh, this is a very conducive to the operation and also uh, effectiveness of the council. Once again, we uh, proposing amendments to the rules of procedure because we have a bigger size of the council in the next term and uh, we will have uh, to uh, make appropriate arrangements uh, so that uh, it's reasonable compared with um, other parliaments. Now, in uh, the in quorum course, uh, we're going to make some amendments so as uh, to Got against um, abuse, and uh, we hope that uh, the um, 
uh, we can get the support of the public in terms of the order and a solemnity and also the attire of council members and there will also uh, be regulations on objects that can be displayed in council once again i want to thank members uh, for the committee for the contribution and i thank uh, the whole council uh, for the very constructive advice during our consultation period and of course i must thank the secretary for the assistance they have rendered to us I now put a question to you, and that is the motion uh, by Mr. Pozet be passed. Ms. Tarili, in order that we can conduct our smooth, uh, smoothly and fairly, the uh, Committee on Rules and Procedures should review our rules uh, regularly and to submit the proposed amendments uh, the latest, the last uh, amendments were implemented in March, and now we have uh, another batch of four major amendments. I won't repeat the details. I will not say something about how I feel about Proposal 1 and Proposal 3. First, committee membership cap in the past. Apart from the uh, House Committee and the Finance Committee, we don't have put a cap on uh, the membership of uh, panels, but uh, this has created a problem. Uh, starting with the new term, different factions of uh, members would uh, sign up for membership of different panels, and after the chairman is elected, uh, some members will withdraw their membership. In the, in, the, in the days when uh, there were political, serious, serious political arguments, and when there are controversial uh, candidates, uh, there will be many candidates uh, for the chairmanship. And every time it would take, uh, it would uh, only allow uh, one, one speech to be given by each member because of the sheer number of uh, members. As a result, Members cannot uh, really focus on some uh, issues and have a in-depth discussion, and such a phenomena would have an effect on the committee, including the f uh, the presence of a quorum. It's not uh, conducive to this council's uh, discharge of uh, its duty to monitor the government. Uh, in view of the increase of the number of members to ninety in the next uh, session. We will have to give serious consideration to this proposed cap. I'm grateful to the com members of the uh, CROP and the Secretariat for their efforts. I have participated in the discussion on these uh, amendments, and and uh, I think the proposed amendment would address the, the problems identified. The DAP supports the uh, amendment to the House rules and the rules of procedure, so that starting from the next term, uh, a member can only be uh, a member of a committee for, of, of a member of six panels or, or of committees. Some are the, of the view that this this is not uh, going to help us uh, discharge our duties and this will be a cut curtailment of a member's right to join the panels and subcommittees. Well, I would like to say, say these three points in, in response so that the public will understand this. The CROP has, is a very prudent in uh, some proposing this. We have uh, made reference to UK Parliament, uh, New Zealand, uh, German uh, parliaments, and uh, French parliaments. Actually, they all have uh, some sort of restrictions on the number of uh, committees that they, 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 the MPs can join. This is to uh, facilitate the uh, effective discharge of uh, Parliament's uh, functions. And this is a common practice. Uh, according to existing rules, if uh, some members are really interested in certain uh, subjects, they can attend the meeting uh, without first joining the panel. So this will not be affected. And there's a flexibility arrangement in the new rules. 
for bills committee or subcommittees appointed to study subsidiary legislation. If the, the relevant panel uh, feels that there's a need to increase the membership, and it can do so with the uh, approval of the House committee. So there's a flexibility on the num on the size of the membership. So uh, with this amendment, the um, the amendments uh, would allow this flexibility because uh, different sub committees look at different uh, subsidiary legislation. Uh, so I'll pause here to, because of the time limit. I support the amendments. Mr. Tommy Jung, President, I would like to support Mr. Paul Chair's uh, motion to move to amend the rules of procedure and house rules under Article 75. In relation to the election of chairman and deputy chairman, we witnessed in the past uh, the uh, abuses uh, carried done by some members, and also the, there's the suggestion to regulate the attire of members in attending meetings. In the past, uh, some members would uh, interrupt the other members and raise a point of order. And uh, under the previous rules, uh, the member who was speaking had have to sit down, and the chairman or president would have to deal with the point of order. If uh, now, if the uh, chairman or president think that this is a, a point of order, a point of order question uh, raised abusively, it would he can decide not to deal with it or to deal with it in any way he or she thinks. On the point of order question, well, the uh, in the past uh, the the mutual destruction of camp uh, would uh, raise uh, points of order repeatedly in order to disrupt the meeting, but now the chairman can decide when to deal with the points of order if uh, it's considered to be abusive. Uh, this is uh, good because uh, that would prevent uh, peop members from abusing the rules. Another amendment is on the membership and the election of chairman and deputy chairman of a committee. And there's a, a, a membership allocation mechanism for a panel is uh, kept at uh, 20. And then uh, other would be 15. We can repeat uh, the uh, absurd situation whereby we could not elect a chairman uh, of a committee for a long, for a long uh, protracted period. And now there's a regulation that members should uh, be properly attired, and members are only allowed to display objects uh, relevant to the subject under discussion. But uh, there can be uh, rules to, to be uh, set by the relevant uh, committee from time to time. The main principle is that uh, the object displays must be uh, appropriate in the light of this discussion that's going on. And also under ROP 41, uh, that will be the factor to be considered. And in the past, uh, some members displayed uh, very uh, large objects. These amendments are aimed at improving our work efficiency and then uh, will not be hijacked by some people's political agenda. So the Liberal Party support that the amendments move under Rule 75. Lastly, over the years, every time uh, when we ask the Secretariat to uh, carry out a study of the rules, we will say that it's a time-consuming exercise, and we might as well forget it. But uh, Mr. Paul Chair has been very insistent on uh, doing the, these things. Now we have forgot the, these uh, rules and proposed amendments, and given the current situation, the fact that we can 
amend the rules and it shows that uh, we all want to avoid uh, wasting uh, council meeting time and we are trying to restore the rights uh, situation. In the past year or so, we spent a lot of time in coming up with these new rules. As uh, Madam Deputy has pointed out, some members have uh, got other views concerning the size of membership. But uh, we are all adopt a give and take spirit and uh, we have come to a compromise. Mr. Kuo Wai Kang. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I'm a member of uh, CROP. Uh, we have to answer a question first. Why now? Uh, with the uh, re with the uh, drastic reduction of uh, members belonging to the mutual destruction care, why do we still have to um, amend the rules? Well, we have to guard against uh, risk as a precautionary measure. That is the the new uh, rule in the in the country. So apart from uh, regulating the members in the mutual destruction camp, we are regulating other members as well. We have the yellow card system and the remuneration deduction uh, for abortive uh, meetings. It, it, so such rules apply on uh, the pro-establishment camp as well. The rules are there to uh, make sure that the meetings of the council can be conducted smoothly and to protect the dignity and uh, status of this council. But in the past, uh, we have the mutual destruction camp, we have the black cap rioters, there are um, members with ulterior motive uh, and uh, turn the rules into uh, weapons and uh, use them on the council. If we do not amend the rules, it's just a rheumatism, and you have a seizure, you you have an outbreak from time to time. So we have to get to the root of the problem and solve them. But there are a number of proposals. I would like to talk about number one, uh, calling for asking for a quorum call in an abusive manner. The uh, President uh, would be given powers to stop members who are abusing this rule. Our uh, uh, memory is still fresh. Uh, there, there, they, they, there were people who abusively uh, used this to express their political views and they would interrupt other members. If other members' uh, arguments uh, hit them at the right spot, they would uh, interrupt uh, the member uh, by raising a point of order so as to so to uh, disrupt uh, the members' uh, arguments uh, that they don't like and such an amendment uh, would uh, make our meetings smoother and it certainly would meet public expectation. And another amendment uh, is not yet uh, proposed this time. And that is uh, when someone asks for a quorum call, whether we can uh, prohibit members from leaving the chamber. According to the rules of procedure, members should make the best efforts to form a quorum. But in the past, uh, the one asking for a quorum call would also leave. So the intention was not to rest, uh, have a quorum and to facilitate the continuation of the meeting. Well, they are just trying to uh, stir up a trouble. But there are still uh, legal issues to resolve. At uh, this time, we cannot have it. This is uh, really uh, a pity. It's just uh, an, an easy issue to tackle. And there's uh, another one 
on the limitation on the mem size of membership or the number of panels one member can join. Uh, this is uh, to be understood by the reasonable notion of division of labor. When we have 90 members, uh, those these members will have to uh, sh share the responsibility reasonably. This will not affect members' right to take part in meeting because they still attend even though they are not a member. This will make sure that meetings are, will be even smoother. Well, we have to plug the loopholes. Uh, we would uh, therefore prevent the mutual destruction camp uh, from uh, turning our rules into their weapons. And we will also be able to uh, win public support accordingly. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Madam Deputy, today we are considering the proposed resolution moved by Mr. Paul Chair, Chairman of the Committee on Rules of Procedure under Article 75 of the Basic Law to amend the Rules of Procedure. In recent years, the opposition camp used different means to filibuster and disrupt order at the Council, and they impeded the scrutiny of various bills and legislation. There were calls for reviewing the House Rules and Rules of Procedures of LegCo in order to discharge council business in an efficient and effective manner. Since the start of the 2020-21 LegCo session, the CROP has been studying different proposals to amend the ROP and um, at the council meeting on March the 24th, a proposed resolution was passed to approve the first batch of proposed amendments to the rules of procedure. And today we are considering the second batch of amendments approved at the council on June the 25th. And these encompass the chairman and deputy chairman elections. As for subcommittees on policy issues, a cap of 20 would be imposed in terms of membership for subcommittees on subsidiary legislation and other instruments. The cap is 25 members, and each member can join um, up to six panels. And the election procedures for chairman and deputy chairman are also amended, and if this is passed, they would come into effect at the start of the seventh term of LegCo. I am a member of the CROP and a member of BPA, and I support the amendments. The seventh LegCo um, will see the membership of LegCo increase from 70 to 90, and there is a need to impose a cap on the number of members per panel and subcommittee in order to ensure efficiency. And the another amendment is on the taking of quorum. If a LegCo meeting is, a, is adjourned due to a lack of quorum, for members who are absent within valid notice or valid reasons, a financial penalty would be imposed. And reasonable reasons include um, illness, um, paternity or maternity, and the financial penalty is equivalent to um, one day's remuneration of a member not serving on, LegCo, on Exco. And um, for quorum calls taken abusively, they could be ignored by the LegCo president. This seeks to plug the loophole in recent years in which um, point of order has been abused by opposition members and there are also provisions in the ROP on the um, attire worn by members and the display of objects by members to illustrate a point. The second to fourth items of amendments would come into effect on the date of publication on Gazette. I find these proposed amendments pragmatic. It is important to ensure that LegCo can discharge its functions And LegCo members should maintain a proper image while discharging their duties, and this is conducive 
to preserving the dignity of the council. When the COP, CROP discussed the above amendments, they sought to strike a proper balance by allowing members to take part in council business properly, providing oversight on the government while plugging loopholes in the rules of procedure. And this would ensure efficiency in the proceedings of panels and subcommittees. I speak in support of Mr. Paul Chair's proposed resolution. Madam Deputy, earlier at the House Committee, I indicated that I had reservations about the proposed resolution, especially on the points of setting a cap on the membership size of panels and subcommittees. And I have no issues with the remaining amendments. So I'd like to go on record um, emphasizing that point. We need to strike a balance between efficiency of council proceedings and the rights of members. We have repeatedly amended the, the ROP, and we also um, amended the electoral system. I have every confidence in the changes um, instituted by the central government, and this could effectively um, prevent further chaos going forward. As of now, um, non-members are allowed to speak in a panel or subcommittee meeting. And for issues that are not contentious, um, no filibuster would take place. Um, everyone um, could tune into every single meeting, so members will not speak just for the sake of it. But with the amendments, um, members' rights to vote would be restricted. That would be inevitable. I believe members have enough intelligence to decide how many subcommittees to join, and at the end, um, they have to hold themselves accountable to the people of Hong Kong. And um, what they say must be of quality. You um, pointed out that the membership size would um, would increase at LegCo, but I do not agree with the argument. Members could have different views, and they can agree to disagree, and any um, differences could be resolved in a sensible manner. And some people believe that um, the right to vote um, should not be taken for granted. If that's the logic, then what is the point of having the legislature? Everyone or anyone can simply say what they want. It's about having votes at LegCo. In terms of modifications to the ROP and electoral system of Hong Kong, one important idea is to um, improve the quality of proceedings but at the end of the day, we need people who are willing to dedicate their time in politics. So um, I find it difficult to support this proposed resolution for the two reasons I described above. And I call for members' understanding in that. Mr. Gary Chan. Thank you. Madam Deputy. To further refine the rules of procedure and to improve the efficiency um, of the next term of LegCo, a group of pro-establishment members sat down and came up with a second batch of proposed amendments to the ROP. And I proposed those amendments at the CROP. Mr. Paul Chair um, mentioned that the amendments include um, requirements on the tire um, election procedures for chairman and deputy chairman, etc. Mr. Michael Tian talked about the cap on the membership size of panels and subcommittees, and this is something I want to talk about as well. In the next term of LegCo, there will be 90 members for 
um, panels or subcommittees with many members. Um, for instance, the panel on security always had 40 members. Every time um, I had to wait at least um, 10 minutes to form a quorum. So a lot of time was wasted. And going forward, we are going to have 90 members. If we have 60 to 70 members in a panel or subcommittee, we will have to wait even longer before a meeting can begin. And this is something no one wants to see. So that is why um, we came up with these proposed amendments. Um, the initial idea was um, a cap of 15 members, but members um, thought that was too low. So we eventually changed that to 20 members. And some people asked whether members' um, opportunities to speak will be restricted as a result. Um, those who are not members to a panel can still take part in panel meetings and speak, even though they could not vote. But um, voting is not a common occurrence at panel meetings. This year, um, no um, vote had taken place at any panel meetings, and even um, items um, voted upon at panel meetings are not binding, and members simply um, express their wishes. Um, the real votes would take place at the Bills Committee, Council, or Finance Committee. So this is something worth thinking about. Some independent members are concerned that the major parties would um, monopolize panels restricting their participation. This is certainly not the case. At the CLOP and Public Accounts Committee, there is a mechanism in place um, to negotiate the um, allocation of seats among different um, parties or members of different backgrounds. And LegCo has a proper mechanism in place as well. Um, in case of any um, external um, visits, there is a mechanism in place at LegCo to um, allocate um, members from different parties. So in other words, there are both formal and informal means to allow different parties and members to participate in panels. And um, so no one would be dominating. Some people wonder whether the work of members would be affected as a result of the changes. Those who want to speak can still continue to speak up. A few days ago, um, I was at a PWSC meeting despite not being a member, and um, no one would stop me from doing that. So the members' ability to provide oversight on the government would not be affected. The proposed changes would improve the legislature I um, do understand members' concerns, but um, they could be addressed under current mechanisms already. So there's no need to worry about that. Mr. Horace Chang, Madam Deputy, there are four proposals, and I will focus on the membership size of committees. Well, Madam Deputy, this is not uh, something conjured out of thin air by the Committee on Rules of Procedure, and we're grateful to the Secretariat for their research. And like other members said, we already drew reference from the various practices in the parliaments in other countries, such as New Zealand, Singapore, Germany, UK, Canada, etc. They might, they might have different design, but in these examples I mentioned, the uh, chairmanship and the membership size of committees are very much correlated to the strength of different political parties and the composition in the council or in the parliament. And then the relevant parliaments uh, and the parties will then proceed to uh, 
electing or selecting the members to take up positions in the parliament. So I would say that there is a practical need to draw reference from uh, the uh, other parliament's experiences and to revise our own rules. And from previous experience, I would say that um, it would be more efficient if the committee's membership size is limited to 15. In the recent bills committee, for uh, bills committees, for example, a membership size of 15 did allow us to operate very efficiently in order to complete the scrutiny of such a colossal bill as the bill to improve the electoral system. As for the collocation bill, the committee comprised 64 members. For the National Anthem Bills Committee, there were 62 members. I also took part in the examination process, and as a Bills Committee member, the first thing I did as I stepped into the room was to press the button as we need to needed to raise in order to get a chance to speak, because for each member, they would always speak beyond the speaking time limit. And if you didn't get a chance to join the queue, there wouldn't be a chance for you to ask any question at all. And that posed a very difficult issue at each uh, meeting. So if the membership size is now limited to 20, as per this proposal, and for both committee for the membership size to be limited to 15, I would find it appropriate unless otherwise decided by the uh, committee itself. And this provision provides a flexibility for the unexpected circumstances. And I believe that the system would allow us to uh, handle uh, the different circumstances. And about the allocation of seats, again, this proposal is very important. Apart from considering the strengths of different political parties in this council as the basis of allocation, it is also flexible. It also looks after members who have no political affiliation. So I support the mechanism. And Madam Deputy, apart from the membership size and composition of committees, there is another pro, uh, proposal in relation to the election of chairman and deputy chairman, and also the uh, procedure of dealing with a point of quorum or point of order, um, attire for members dis attending council meetings and display of objects by members at council meetings. Now, perhaps there might be a misconception uh, from the general public that uh, we are doing nothing but going through the nitty-gritty. But in fact, these proposals are floated exactly to tackle the issues that we have previously witnessed in the Council. If we all behaved ourselves properly, the problem would be resolved. Only that uh, it didn't happen, and that is why we need this amendment exercise to bring the Council back on the right track so that we can restore order in the Council. I support the um, resolution. I so submit. Dr. Chen Shung Tai. Thank you. Madam Deputy, in relation to the amendments to the rules of procedure, I don't think I can agree on them. Um, there are three grounds. First, when it comes to efficiency of the Council, that is not the same as whether it is a good one, because if you want to act efficiently, we could just emerge with the government. The other point is we need to consider the establishment size. However, we must not sacrifice um, the establishment for the for other purposes. Now, despite increasing the number of members, I think more ideally we should have more representatives to better reflect our views. There is now a proposed restriction on the number or the membership size of panelists and subcommittees, and more importantly, on bills committee. The major flaw is that if you put a cap on the membership size, the problem of class will be more um, serious in the council. Imagine a member without any political party's background or political affiliation, if I'm so-called lone wolf here, like myself, and if I could only choose to join six 
committees with a membership size of 20 at most. So what which committees would I be joining? Uh, health services, transport, livelihood, etc. What about constitutional affairs, security, and others? I won't be able to join because of the limit. In other words, when I want to represent the voice of the grassroots, I won't be able to become a member uh, of other panels in order to reflect the views of the people. Of course, you may counter-argue by saying that you can still express your view as a non-member at the panel. But what about our basic duty of moving motions and voting for the motions? Well, you may say that it's just political grandstanding, it's not binding. So all in all, I don't think the cap on membership size has any political implication. That's the case for panels and subcommittee. I do agree. As for Bill's committee, why is it limited to 15? Because for Bill's committee, it has a legal, um, legally binding effect. Say for rent control, if you limit the membership size of the Bill's committee to 15, I can't help but wonder whether the majority or the minority views can be expressed. Say if the government would like to introduce rent control, and then there might be um, functional constituency members representing the business community taking up all the seats of the Bill's committee. And that is still possible. But of course, within the pro-establishment camp, there may be members representing different vested interests. But at least, as far as the bills committees are concerned, apart from panels, subcommittees, if there is a cap at 20 members, then why should the membership size of Bill's committee be limited to 15, as a Bill's committee has a legally binding effect? And this brings out an apparent flaw, that is, to suppress minority views. Point three, how should I put it? Well, I won't say it's um, incomprehensible, only that I really don't get the ulterior motive that is about the uh, att uh, attire of members. It's not about whether we respect the council. The image of the member is reflected in the electoral process. If this is not properly reflected, and then you're required to put a pocket square in a business suit you wear when you attend council meetings in order to show respect and dignity for the council, then I'm sorry to say that uh, you will get the contrary effect. Not to mention another perplexing point of the amendment exercise. Why is it that it's for the incumbent members to decide on matters relating to the um, 90 members to be returned? There might be members re representing ethnic minorities or representing um, other minorities. They might uh, dress as the average uh, Jane and Joe, and it's not for us to decide on their attire. Mr. Christopher Jiang. Thank you, Madam Deputy. This is a re resolution to amend the rules of procedure. I support the amendments because I believe the amendments would improve the existing flaws of the rules of procedure. And these are also corresponding amendments in relation to the uh, change in the uh, Legislative Council in the next term. I think they are constructive. First, in relation to members who are absent without valid reasons, a financial penalty should be imposed. And I support this amendment. I believe this amendment is entirely appropriate because although members might wear different hats and they might have other uh, businesses to attend to, I don't think this should be a reason for them not to show up at council meetings. It is the member's duty to attend council meetings. And this is only a basic requirement. Such as an employee shouldn't be absent without official leave. 
Council members here represent their constituents, and they should not be given the pr uh, prerogative of being absent from council meetings. They should fulfill their responsibility by attending council meetings. This is only to meet the public's expectation. To some extent, the amendment could prevent members from deliberately trying to uh, cause the meeting to be aborted. In the past, as we know, some members wanted to vent their spike or achieve their ulterior motive and resorted to a point of quorum frequently. And meanwhile, they would leave the chamber in order to cause the meeting to be aborted or, co or our progress to be delayed. Of course, after improving the electoral system, all members joining this council will be patriotic, and I don't think there will be a repeat of these attempts to uh, cause the meeting to be aborted. However, we should put down the improvement uh, to the rules in black and white so that in the future we can invoke the rules and impose a financial penalty on the non-compliant members so that they would shoulder responsibility for their misconduct in terms of their of, um, financial loss. I find it necessary. The other point is about cap on the membership size of panels, subcommittees, and subcommittees, and the other amendment restricting members from joining more than six committees. I understand that some members have reservations. They are concerned that their rights of joining committees may be deprived of. Um, I don't. I understand, but I do not agree with them. Despite having a cap on the membership size of panels and also the number of committees a member can join, there is no restriction on whether a member can speak at the, or attend a meeting of the panels and committees. I think there will not be any differential treatment uh, whether you are a member of the panel or not. Since by the seventh term of the Legislative Council, the number of seats will increase from 70 to 90 to ensure efficient operation of the committees, I would find these amendments acceptable. As for the uh, council members' attire for attending council meetings and display of objects at council meetings, I think these proposals would help maintain the integrity and dignity of the council. I'm going to support these proposals as well. I hope that we'll continue to improve the rules of procedure to facilitate the smooth conduct of uh, business in this council. I so submit. Mr. Ronnie Chen, Madam Deputy, the ROP and the House rules, um, the first batch of amendments have been passed in March. The second batch of amendments is historical. The number of um, members in the last call uh, in the seventh term will be increased from 70 to 90 to ensure smooth operation of the council. Concerning um, the cap on uh, the uh, number of members uh, in panels as well as the composition, uh, there are some adjustments. So I will support all the amendments. I speak in support um, on two points. First, um, Punishment for members who are absent without um, valid reasons, as well as um, requiring uh, members to dress in business attire. There are ten, um, uh, ten points in the terms of terms of reference of members. I understand that um, no one would ag argue with that. According to the basic law. The um, quorum for council meeting is um, no less than half of the number of um, members in council. In the past, um, the uh, opposition camp have been raising a quorum calls incessantly and rendered the council um, inoperable. Between year 2015 and 16, um, there were 1,500 quorum calls and um, 223 hours have been wasted. 18 council meetings were aborted. In the past, uh, in the past few years, the situation um, was similar. However, after the um, quitting on Mars um, last year by um, the pro-establishment, uh, pro uh, dem uh, 
the by the opposition camp, um, we have not seen um, incessant quorum calls again. The situation has has improved. However, we still have to ensure that um, the council meetings can be conducted as smoothly, and also we have to have a mechanism to punish and prevent the members from abs from being absent uh, without valid reasons. Under the amendments, if the um, council meetings are aborted because of a lack of quorum, uh, those who are absent without um, valid reasons would be subject to financial penalties. However, for those who have valid reasons, for example, um, uh, on business visits, uh, paternity or maternity uh, leave uh, or illnesses, um, these are considered valid reasons. According to the Secretariat, in the previous uh, session, the uh, cost per hour was at $289,000, which means that um, when meetings were resumed after abortion, even if it, it was just one or two hours, $600,000 would be wasted. Those are public money. The um, Punishment uh, for absence is only $3,000. It is uh, very insignificant compared to the cost. It would serve as a reminder um, to members about the importance of um, presence in meeting. In view of the um, frequent abortion of meetings in the past, I think the public would support uh, this financial penalty mechanism. I would like to talk about um, the requirements of business attire. Business attire doesn't mean what a doctor Cheng Chung Tai said that uh, we must wear ties and a uh, um, pocket chief. According to the rules, members have to um, display decorum um, in meeting. However, there are no um, explicit um, requirements on what proper attire is. In the past, um, there were members who wore t shirts and uh, sports clothing to um, council meeting and um, hampering the um, um, solemnity of the meeting. Now, um, 42A and 43 require members to uh, uh, to dress in business attire to council meetings, and also there is a negative list. For example, uh, members cannot wear t-shirts, uh, jeans, or uh, slippers. For attire of members, there are requirements in different countries. In the UK, New Zealand, and uh, Singapore, there are also an um, established mechanism for the attire. Um, the uh, House of um, the House of Commons uh, in the UK has published guidelines that if members are not attired properly, they will not be allowed to speak or even uh, be present in the um, chamber. With a guideline on what a proper attire is, we can um, prevent uh, members from dressing um, however they want, and this can maintain um, the professional image of the Legislative Council. I think the amendments can make our work more efficient, more standardized, as well as um, rebuilding our um, image in the public. Thank you. Mr. Chen Kim Po. Thank you, Madam, che uh, Madam Deputy. I speak in support of this batch of amendments on the ROP. Over the years, the opposition camp has been exploiting the loopholes in the ROP to carry out filibustering with an aim to uh, attack the government and the pro-establishment members and uh, get political um, advantages. It has become a tool uh, of the political struggle. There are many loopholes because um, the ROP um, was set by um, members in the colonial era. Back then, um, those were all gentlemen members, and no one would dare standing up against the colonial government. That's why the ROP um, did not have to be too specific. Whenever there was uh, a, a, an issue, the president would uh, make a ruling. However, uh, after the reunification, a lot of people made use of the loopholes and uh, became more radical and exploited the ROP. Uh, someone even threw stink bomb in the council meeting. So we were left with no choice but to amend the ROP. I support all the amendments, including requiring a proper attire um, of members. In um, all legislatures in the world, um, members would be dressed properly. This shows uh, the respect um, the respect of members to the council, and it has to do with the image of the legislative council. This is basic manner. However, in uh, however recently, some members would like to show a stance or uh, attract eyeballs and dress um, casually. This would damage the. Uh, image of the council, 
as well as um, a, disres uh, a disrespectful act to uh, others in the uh, council. Now we have to um, uh, specify the requirements like um, schools. And also there is a cap on the uh, maximum number of uh, members in panels and um, committees as well as the uh, composition. This is unnecessary because the number of members will be increased from 70 to 90. There are um, pros and cons. However, um, this is agreed by um, members in the crop, so I will support it. I think there should be flexibility in implementing the rules. Members can um, uh, communicate and make um, some um, uh, concessions. For example, uh, the panel on financial services should be comprised of um, those from the financial services sector, in insurance sector, and um, and um, so on, and the banking sector. If uh, Mr. Ronnie Chen from uh, the banking sector and uh, Mr. Christopher Chen from the financial services sector cannot join the uh, panel on financial services, then that would be uh, undesirable. And also um, for panels on uh, establishments, um, development of um, commerce, and so on, uh, the relevant members should join. Maybe I'm worrying too much, but we cannot rule out um, the possibility of extreme scenarios. So in implementing the rules, I think we should um, coordinate among members to allow the relevant members to join. We have a very, we have lots of room um, to deli deliberate on matters. However, because of the opposition camp's um, disruptive behaviors, now we have to amend the ROP. Without black clad violence and without a collusion with foreign uh, forces, that would not be the national security law. These people are forcing um, our hands. So I hope we can treasure whatever room we have. If anyone still exploits the loopholes and carry on uh, with disruptive behaviors, the room will, will dimin diminish even more. Mr. Tony Chair. Madam Deputy, this is the fourth round of proposed amendments to the rules of procedure. The first three batches of uh, amendments um, tackle filibustering by opposition members and the amendments we are considering today are partly to deal with filibustering and some of these proposals are rather forward-looking and proactive. The idea is to dovetail with the new electoral system and to rebuild the dignity of LegCo while improving the quality of proceedings and debates and I support these changes in principle. No matter how we amend the ROP, the key is that members behave themselves and respect themselves by not committing any acts that would affect their images and the image of the legislature. First of all, imposing a cap on membership sizes of panels and subcommittees. The next term of LegCo will have 90 members, so the current practice must change. In the past, um, in some cases, um, there were up to 60 members in a panel or subcommittee, and each member could only speak for one or two minutes, and it was, it was not conducive to quality discussions. By setting a cap on the membership size of panels and members, and the number of panels and SCs each member can join. If sim if members simply um, attend meetings um, without much participation, or if they do not even bother to read papers, regardless of membership size, um, the quality of the debates would not improve. As for the attire of members, um, there were strict um, requirements before reunification. Members were not allowed to wear um, shirts without collars and after reunification, um, the dress code was relaxed and perhaps um, it went over the board and um, people were wearing t-shirts. As for the display of um, props, at times um, they were insulting and they at times um, they incited illegal or violent behaviors. The proposed amendments allow members to refocus 
on the themes of discussions instead of um, trying to attract eyeballs with props or attire, then the dress code would only apply to LegCo meetings and the committee of the whole council. And on other occasions, um, there should be requirements as well, in my opinion. The CROP also proposed that um, in case of abortions due to a lack of quorum, members absent without a vi valid reason would face, a would, would face a financial penalty. I do not have issues with that. I think valid reasons should include um, written excuses um, filed to the um, president before the meeting. And I'd like to talk about some issues not touched upon in all four rounds of the amendments. As for the scrutiny of bills for the improving electoral system um, bill or legislation, less than two months um, left before the scrutiny of the bill was completed. So we can see that with members' best efforts, um, any bill could be dealt with within a reason reasonable time frame. As for certain bills, such as um, the Municipal Solid Waste Disposal Bill and other bills, um, resumption of second reading is yet to resume after some two years, so there is a lack of efficiency. If members have certain views about bills and they fail to convince the government, they can propose amendments themselves or they can speak against the bill at the second and third reading. Um, things should not be allowed to drag on incessantly. I hope CROP will look into this issue and to draw up a reasonable time frame for considering bills. Thank you. Dr. Priscilla Lang. Ma'am Deputy, if our Legislative Council has not become so uncivilized and chaotic. I do not think um, there would be a need to amend the ROP. For these proposed amendments, I believe um, some time is needed to observe their effects, and I believe um, we are more or less there. I have been a member of the CLP for the 13th year. Um, back then, Mr. Raymond Wong threw a banana and um, members started using abusive language and that prompted a review of practice at LegCo. In terms of um, floodgates being open, back in 2004 when long hair was here, he has been wearing a t-shirt. The then LegCo president um, was um, accepting and um, allowed such attire. I believe um, Ms. Fan at that time could not have um, expected um, how members um, would act. In terms of imposing financial penalties um, at the start of our discussions, we talked about members who behave improperly time and again, despite warnings, and some people um, asked whether their remuneration could be docked, and the conclusion was that it was very difficult. But now we can see that this is actually feasible. Personally, I believe members should um, focus on their work for um, many members, especially those returned from geographical constituencies, um, they would engage in district work. And in the next term, we will have 90 members. There should be better coordination between all. We looked at Article 75 of the Basic Law, and we wonder where could there could be flexibility to um, the quorum required at meetings such that um, meetings would not be frequently aborted. We looked at the rules of procedure in the U.S. Um, Congress, and and um, they 
only require a quorum um, when a vote is carried out. But according to Article 72, 75 of the Basic Law, um, a quorum is needed for meetings. But um, it is um, there is no clear definition for what constitutes a meeting, or would can we um, should we only require a quorum when it comes to a vote during a meeting? If interpretation of the law is needed, well, I think that is going overboard. And as such, um, imposing financial penalties is a sensible solution. Um, in the past, um, we had a vote every um, two minutes um, when some members resorted to filibustering, and um, with these um, changes, um, filibustering could be um, reduced. With the next time of um, LegCo, um, that will contain 90 members. Um, I believe, despite different um, views and stances, um, I think um, most members would be um, focusing on their work. So that is why we should retain some flexibility for the president to make a judgment. And in terms of um, attire, according to Article 40 or RLP 42, proper, a proper dress code should be observed for members. I think um, it is very clear. Um, but some members um, <coughs> decided not to observe a proper dress code, so now we need to spell things out in detail. Times change, and so does dress code. In the future, I hope the LegCo president um, should be accommodating when they deal with the issue of dress code. Does any other wish to speak? Dr. Junius Ho. Madam Deputy, I speak in support of the proposed resolution to amend the rules of procedure. Since the 22nd of December 2017, when we achieved a breakthrough, at that time, um, we faced extenuating circumstances at the Legislative Council. Um, a group of uh, members who claimed that they were representing the people, um, what they were actually doing um, went against public will. Um, they made quorum calls. Um, they interrupted when other members were speaking. And um, they engage in um, disgusting behavior at LegCo. They also displayed items that were more insulting. than to um, express themselves in a peaceful and sensible manner. So their um, goal was to insult others and disrupt proceedings. And on December the 22nd, 2017, um, which was Christmas time, we were concerned that violent clashes would be staged. Fortunately, on December the 22nd, 2017, we were able to institute a change in terms of the issue of having a quorum of at least half the members. Um, we adjusted the um, re requirement for the Legislative Council, while on other occasions um, the basic law provisions would still apply. And um, on March the 26th this year, in light of ugly behavior such as those exhibited by um, Mr. Dennis Kwok, he represented the legal sector and he was also a barrister. I, um, I tried to um, convince him, but he wouldn't listen. 
I think、um, he totally ignored the advice. So、um, at the end, he became infamous. I don't know where he went. Perhaps he is now in Canada. But the issue of、um, chairman election for the House Committee dragged on for more than half a year, and one or two weeks on.、Um, I told other members that we had to be decisive in、um, stopping the filibuster, and some members、um, said they were not concerned. And then、um, the problem remained in Chinese New Year, and then Easter. And at the end, we resolved the problem in May. So that amendment、um, was to tackle filibustering. And、um, on July the seventeenth this year, we、um, talked about the abuse of procedures or people、uh, making a point of order. I think、um, such acts were infuriating. Um, I think all those、um, acts、um, came from that side of the room. And in terms of making quorum calls, well, the amendments proposed this time would not completely、um, eliminate the issues, but I agree with most of them. That is, members could not interrupt when others are speaking, and the decision of the president should be final, and、um, proper attire should be worn by members, and members could not act in a way to. Jeopardize、um, their own、um, image or dignity of the council. And in terms of、um, panels and subcommittees,、um, some members、um, used to compete for chairman or deputy chairman. I think、um, the amendments would tackle this issue, and I'm completely supportive. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, I now call upon Mr. Paul Chair to reply. Then the debate will come to a close. Mr. Paul Chair, Madam Deputy, I thank the members who have spoken quite keenly. Keenly,、uh, I'm not going to repeat my points, save that I'd like to supplement three points that haven't been touched on. Dr. Chang Chung Tai asked why we are laying down rules for the next term. This is just a matter of convention in terms of administrative arrangements, remuneration, etc. Usually, it is a practice for the serving members to lay down rules、uh, for the next term. It's only common sense, and the next term of members may revise the rules again if they wish. Mr. Michael Tian talked about how members' performance and efficiency would be monitored. Now. I want to supplement that electors will be able to vote once every four years, so there is a lagging effect, and a year of,、uh, I mean, a term of four years is a really short term, and perhaps、uh, the voters' memory is also short-lived. If you perform well towards the end of the term, they will be impressed. Now we also have other instances of unfairness in the council. Sometimes we rely on incomplete and superficial records, and we may not have noticed the fact that some electoral members tend to give a litany of the panels and committees that they joined in the previous year in order to canvass support. It is、uh, really common that despite joining the panels and committees, they Didn't actually attend the meetings, so my point is that we should tighten the rule to、um, increase the efficiency here. The other point is about an effective quorum or membership of a committee. It should be limited to fifteen or twenty. It should not be too big because. Let's say、um, Sam Lee Lau, who was a very hardworking member,、um, in her days, back then.
every member would be present at the meeting that she chaired. And by participating in the meeting, I don't mean just sitting here, but to be fully prepared to have done the homework and to listen and to give responses and not to just sit and go. And for government officials attending the meeting, they would feel the same. They would feel that uh, there is an effective dialogue instead of members making their own speeches. This is what I mean by efficiency. Now, the example often cited by other members is the Consolidated Amendment Bill to improve the electoral system. It's a colossal bill covering different aspects. But then if we have full attendance, we could facilitate a good exchange. So from these recent examples, I do believe that if we want the committees and panels to work, we will need to limit the membership size of them. We must not allow a big committee to be formed because if you impose a cap and members there would be hard working. But let's say if we can choose up to four to six um, committees, then I think that uh, this would yield better result. Madam Deputy, another point is this. Dr. Chang Chung Tai referred to the Bills Committee as the more important committees as they um, have legally binding effect. Now, the other point is actually the Council, because at the Council meeting, Members are at liberty to move amendments, to move motions, and to vote on these motions. And this is the crucial task. As for committees, or even bills committee, they are just task forces. They are not the venue for members to exercise their rights and powers. So I hope I have addressed Dr. Chen Chung Tai's concern. The quorum of this council in Hong Kong is unique. Uniquely high, I mean, and if w there is no way to amend the basic law, the only way out for us is to minimize uh, the instances of abuse of the point of uh, quorum. Thank you. And now for the question to you, that is that Mr. Porcher's motion be passed. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Dr. Chang Chung Tai claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
Hoji Bukhi. Voting begins. Please check your votes. Mr. Abraham Shek, are you going to vote? If there are no questions, the voting is closed. The result is displayed. From functional constituencies, 24 present, 23 for. From geographical constituencies, 17 present, 16 for, one against. The question is agreed by majority of two groups of members who are present. I declare the motion passed. Members' motion with no light.